Close your eyes. Watch your breath. And if you're going to talk to yourself, talk to yourself about the breath. We go through the day talking to ourselves, this constant monologue. And if you were, were to record it, write it down. You see how crazy it is, jumping from one thing to the next and then turning around and going over something again and again and again. We've got this ability to talk to ourselves, to teach ourselves, and yet we don't make the most of it. When we're meditating, we're trying to put it to good use. So you talk to yourself about the breath. Talk to yourself about the mind trying to stay with the breath, trying to stay grounded, trying to learn how to be self-sufficient. So that when some of the voices of the mind get a little crazy, you've got other voices of the mind that can bring you back to sanity. This is one of the reasons why we listen to the Buddha, we listen to the Ajans. They've got the voices of sanity. Because as we shape our experience as we go through the day, we fabricate it by the way we breathe, we fabricate it by the way we talk to ourselves, and by the way we take up different perceptions, different images in the mind. And the Buddha is teaching us that there are other ways of doing that. All those 16 steps in breath meditation, instructions on how to fabricate your breath in a better way, how to talk to yourself in a better way about the breath. And then all the images he gives, the similes he gives, help to put things into perspective so we can use those perceptions to shape our mind, shape our experience. When we're upset with other people, he says, keep in mind the fact that your goodwill can be as large as the earth. People can come and spit on the earth and they can urinate on the earth, but it doesn't change the earth at all. The earth is still earth. Make your metta, make your goodwill like the river Ganges. People can come with a torch and try to dry it up, but there's just too much water. Make your mind like space. People can try to write things in space. But nothing stays. You can write your name all day in space and there's nothing to show for it. Let other people's words be like that. They're writing in space. You don't carry it around with you. But you can hold these images in mind. It helps to counteract the other images that the mind uses to, to stab itself, to make itself miserable. So it's good to get some new voices in the mind. The voices of sanity. And who's more sane than the Buddha? He sees everything that goes on in the mind. He's mapped out all the problems. He's mapped out all the ways that you can solve them. And simply learning how to read his maps, how to make the most of them. But they're there. This is why we listen. This is why we read. This is why the Dharma that we learn through listening and reading is a treasure. You can't buy sanity, but the Dhamma, the fund of Dhamma can help keep you sane. It's worth more than any amount of money. <laughs>